Welcome to American Red Devils Podcast. I'm John. I'm Alex. And we're bringing you the best Manchester United news from this side of the pond. Woo, sir. How we doing? How we doing? Strong, composed, complete three points against lowly Sheriff FC yesterday at Old Trafford under the lights, Europa League, game week five. Good match. Never in doubt. Um, you know, they packed it in, but United meticulously broke them down piece by piece. Some good goals all around, some headers, some corner goals. It's been a while since we've seen that. Um, and some some runouts from the mid, uh, from the lads, right? Some young lads. Uh, Garnacho getting a start. He looked lively. Ronaldo, he got his goal. He got all 90 minutes. Him and uh, Eric Ten Hag have, kiss, have kissed and made up. Um, Lindelof came in and looked good. Shaw continues to impress. Casemiro, what a stud he is. And then now it's about probably the, the hardest opponent we're going to play before the pause uh, for the World Cup is West Ham. A frisky West Ham side. David Moyes' boys coming up to Old Trafford on Sunday. How are we feeling? How are we doing? David Moyes' boys. Uh, first sheriff. Who shot the sheriff? It was uh, CR7, Delo, and Rashford. What a header from Rashford. What a header from Delo. Laz did a job. Professional. Uh, they acted like professionals. They did the business. That's what we needed to do. The XG was 3.35 to Manchester United. Zero to Sheriff. Possession 74% to 25%. We dominated high line. Put the pressure on them. They were hard to break down, but we did continue to create chances. And a few uh, great goals from Manchester United. That's what Sheriff should be. Uh, you know, everyone, Kumbaya, kiss and make up, CR7, Garnacho to a certain extent based on Ten Hag's comments. I thought it was all around a positive match, one to build on. This is a quick sprint to the World Cup and some winnable games. These are the types of games that are going to matter at the end of the day. The Sheriffs, the West Hams, we got to be winning all of these heading into the break. And then after that, it's a roll of the dice to see how everyone comes back healthy from the World Cup because United have a lot of players going to be playing a lot of games this year. It's a good point. Uh, and to a certain extent, what happens after the World Cup or during the World Cup is out of our hands, but now it's about controlling our destiny. And this last run out, um, we got three games in the Premier League between now and the break. We have West Ham. We have Villa with a new manager, Unai Emery. Welcome back, Count Tra- Chocula. And then we also have Fulham uh, to finish kind of the run out uh, in mid, mid-November. Also, EFL Cup game, also against Villa. And then, the honestly, one of the bigger matches, Real Sociedad down in San Sebastian, um, it's going to be a tough match. We have to win by at least a couple goals. But winnable matches, we need to pick up points, especially in the Premier League. I think it would be awesome if United could head into the break top four. That would be a lovely accomplishment given how we started the season. Um, but either way, f- people feeling good. I love people making much ado about nada, about Anthony, like doing one extra spin move, <laughs> like losing their minds. I've never seen anything like it. The bias in the media, you see it just on display right there. Everybody going out of their way to defend Ronaldo. Um, and then like slight Anthony because he's, you know, he's razzmatazzin. He's a, he's a Brazilian player playing Europa League football against Sheriff in the home fans. I'll tell you what, Old Trafford faithful. They certainly liked it based on the reaction they had. Look, everyone loves showboating at Old Trafford. I, you know, you need a few goal lead in my opinion, you know, nil, nil isn't the time to be showboating, but you know, everyone hated Ronaldo in the press. That's I'm not going to say like, I just think we're Manchester United biggest club in the world. Anyone does anything on the pitch, you're going to hear about it. The good news is when it's nonsense after the game, it's because we won and there's nothing to talk about. So a uh, little loop-de-doo from Anthony. Look, I don't love it because, it, you know, you're not doing anything with that He move. misplaced the pass after. Which, which... No, if Ronaldo would do all the stepovers, there's like some way the stepovers can help you. But there's you're not doing anything with that thing, that little loop-de-doo. That's not beating anybody. He's buying time. Ronaldo did a lot no, of uh, but, ex- but the step overs and the leg feints and leg feints like that is ridiculous. But you can argue it's like gonna fake out the defender. The spin move ain't doing nothing, you know. Dude, it's it's uh you know like I said, Rasmus has points. It's good for morale. You're playing a team that like what had 25 percent of the ball. United were dominating. Let the kid enjoy himself. He's feeling in form. His, his EPL season, his Manchester United career started well. He needs, he needs, like, if he does, like, the rule should be. You got to make that pass. The pass for the Casemiro no, no. into the box. The that was, like, that would have been a good the, play because he actually was just buying time for him to make the run. Score a brace, then do it. 
you know, and that, like, spin around. He just started. Yeah, he should make he, a meme of himself. Should, just start spinning around, and that score, should be a celebration. If you score like a, if we're up three, you score a goal, you hit a brace, like do whatever you want. Like I don't care. But you know, in a close game, it's not helping you. And that's kind of anti Ten Hag if you think about it. But you know, I, I do. You can't like take the flair out of all Brazilian players because then you'd have Fred. So at the end of the day. <laughs> At the end of the day, yeah, you kind of let Anthony be Anthony, and it really is a non-story for us to talk about. But the real story is the matches we have here, like you mentioned, West Ham. Then we have Saucy Dad coming up next week. Aston Villa, then the League Cup again. We These double game weeks, crazy until the 13th of November. And then, boom, we are off to the World Cup. And, the, and we will be doing a U.S. Men's National Team Takeover podcast with our great U.S. Men's National Team insider Mike, he'll be jumping on, and then we're going to be heading to the World Cup. We'll be getting you podcasts on all the action with a slight tilt to the U.S. Men's National Team because we are Muppets. We do live in the United States, and we do support the United States Men's National Team. And how they're going to play, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Um, Nobody knows because... Yeah, Alex is down on him. Yeah, Alex is down. Re- I mean, for good reason. We got like a chump of a manager, solid squad. He's gonna bring in like Team MLS over to to the desert. So whatever question marks to be asked. Like you said, pods will be coming thick and fast during the World Cup. We're obviously, be slated to cover some U.S. bias, but Manchester United players are gonna be featuring thick and fast. I'm sure there'll be drama inside and out. Ronaldo, you know, he'll be stirring up waves, whatever, heading into the January transfer window. But should be an interesting one. Should be an interesting one. Looking forward to the World Cup. We're going over. We'll see how it goes. Excited about it. Excited to see America take on Iran in that game. Um, but for now, it's about finishing USA this half England of the as well. Strong, you know. USA, yeah. like I mean, Winter Old World Rival, Cup. Baby. But you got Thanksgiving. You're gonna be carving the turkey Thursday. You're gonna be watching USA versus England Friday. Uh, this is probably a once in a lifetime Winter World Cup. Let's hope they never do it again. Never. Um, but you got to enjoy it while it happens. And there's going to be a lot of exciting, like Wales, United States, a lot of great matchups, a lot of great group stages. As soon as the the club football is over in early or mid November and it switches to the World Cup, it's going to be crazy. Who can win it? I have no idea. I think it's going to be a, a wild card because of the the format. Being in the winter is going to drive a lot of people. It, it, they only have a week to prepare. Insane. They literally have a, usually have a month to prepare in the Summer World Cup. They have a week. I think it's going to be a really strange tournament. Um, we'll see how it goes. Quick PSA for the podcast. If you like the America Red Devils, we are for fans, by fans. That is the motto here. We don't have any commercial sponsors on the pod. We want you to support us on Patreon. That is the way to go so we can not do a ton of ad reads and all that nonsense. If you want to support us, check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash America Red Devils. We do a behind-the-scenes episode every single month. We're going to be posting our October episode shortly. Uh, we also give away pins, stickers, scarves, shirts, you name it. Check out our Patreon page. Also, check out our, our uh, store, AmericaRedDevils.store. Scarves, beanies, hoodies. I'm wearing the beanie in the bunker right now. It is chilly here at 6 in the morning on this cold Friday morning in the Bay. So it's beanie season, hoodie season. Pick something up. Everything you buy supports us. Check out our website, www.americadevils.com. We have great fan-generated blog content there. Alex, tell them about uh, you know, liking, subscribing, and writing reviews because that helps us as well, and it's free. It's free. It's a great way to support the pod. Uh, helps us get found organically by, uh, by other fans like yourself. And even better, we're giving away free merch from now to the end of time. All you have to do is write a five-star review of the American Red Devils podcast wherever you listen whether it be on iTunes or Spotify, and send a screenshot to americaredevils at gmail.com with your mailing address, and I'll personally pick, pack, and ship some free ARD gear. Send it straight to your door anywhere in the world. So we got a review real quick before you play that hot fire Hans and Franz that just grows on you like uh, like the bubonic plague, babe. That thing, like, two years ago, I didn't want to touch it. Now it just gives me oh, the feels. Uh, Here's a five-star review from FC Johnson. Best United podcast around. I found out about y'all's podcast through my brother. We've been lifelong United fans. Now I listen to every single episode. This podcast feels like the conversations we have every day about United. Appreciate that. Love what y'all doing. Thanks and keep it up. Glory, glory, man, United. Thank you for the great review. Recommend us to your brothers and sisters. Any Manchester United fan that could uh, appreciate a little, uh, a little hot banter. Yeah, if you don't believe us, this is a really a small time oper- operation. Six a.m. Uh, sir, this guy, you we, and I, cold, cold California morning. 
no, and we only grow by word of mouth, really, uh, our, our social channels. So anytime you can like and subscribe, it goes a long way. And that's what this podcast should be about. It's about that fan take, that bias take. Not trying to tell you we're smarter than you. Sometimes we have bad ones. Sometimes we have good ones. I think that's all fans. We got to go with our gut because we're those Muppets that just screaming off the couch. And that's what this podcast should be about. Speaking of screaming, maybe a <laughs> screaming in the Eastern European clubs. Let's go, Hans and Franz. Manchester United 3, Sheriff 0, Old Trafford, baby, under the lights, Thursday night football, and it's not on Amazon Prime. We had Dave Saves, world number one in net, Malasia at left back, Martinez, Lindelof, center back pairing, DeLow on the right, Erickson, Casemiro, Bruno in the hole, Garnacho finally gets the start. Thank you, Ten Hag, CR7, he's back, baby. Kiss and make up, Anthony. New frosted tips. He's on the right, doing the loop de loop. Loop. How we feel about that uh, lineup? Strong eleven from Eric Ten Hag heading into game week five. You can tell he ain't taking nothing for granted. <laughs> Rotate. Uh, we'll see. Maybe after the World Cup. But like I said, strong eleven. Probably our strongest midfield in Erickson, Fernandez, and Casemiro. Garnacho, like you said, finally gets a start. Good to see that. Lasia, much deserved. Finally get some rotation as well because Shaw's been playing well. Um, and Lindelof, you know, he's next up. He looked, he looked, I mean, not much of a challenge today, but he has looked good. He has stepped up in Varane's place. Sir, I know you cared about CR7 back in the mix. Also, uh, from the death, Van de Beek on the bench. Van he's back. Back, baby. How can the Dutch man ignore his Dutch brother? Van de Beek would feature here. Also, you have Palestre, Rashford, Sancho, McTominay, Shaw, Maguire, Dubrovka, quite a bench. There's some depth there, sir, but not at number nine where we need it. Um, as far as coming out in the first half, sir. You're getting your, you're getting your beat drop right now. It's playing the next, like, <laughs> next Eastern European yeah. block. Hans and Franz, another mix here. Yeah. All right. Check your next tab. First half. Sheriff, pack it in from the jump. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Uh, oh, Proper European oh, re oh, remix. All right. Day, let's get it like, back to business here. We need some more coffee here in the bunker. Look, Sheriff, pack it in. They're coming, playing away at Old Trafford. They're trying to, you know, play spoiler here. This game was big because if we win it, we clinch top two. Top two means knockout stage football in Europa League, and we don't have to play it till February, which is great. Uh, 14th minute, Ronaldo heads just over after some nice work. Ronaldo in the mix. Garnacho looks sharp on the left. This is what we need. We need somebody to come on for Sancho in the 60th, 60th minute when he's not playing well. He's ready to go. I mean, clearly ready to go. I think he pissed off the manager in preseason, yep. and that's why the manager has been stubborn putting him in. That's Eric Ten Hag. Like I said, a little stubborn, but it's paying off. So he's got Garnacho under his thumb now, and he's looking good. 25th minute, Bruno goes just wide from a nice strike. Tried to place it, not quite. Uh, 28th minute, Ronaldo misses a tap in. I actually thought the defender got the final touch here, but Ronaldo, you know how we like to play. If opponent's going to pack it in, he's going to play poacher. He's right there on the offsides line looking for the goalie to spill it or get in behind for a nice cross. So Ronaldo just missed one here. Yeah, uh, it was always looked like Ronaldo was going to get a good chance at one point. You know, he was coming into form. He needs minutes, ultimately. He hasn't looked as sharp as he looked last season. But the team never left it in doubt. You know, never even gave Sheriff a, a sniff. They just controlled possession, moved the ball about we uh, well. 
Defense, you know, never gave him an inch. And a lot of those nice in-swinging balls from Bruno on the right side that we haven't seen enough of this season really set up well for Ronaldo, who, like you said, he's sitting at the five, eight-yard line box just looking to smash it in, uh, and he would eventually get his chance to smash it in. 40th minute, Sheriff, they're going to have a chance. This is a great one, curling ball. Uh, the striker should have had this in. I think this was right on the money. I think he just mistimed the header, but this was, like, unbelievable. It was the classic... Yeah. Cross in Lindelof, like looking behind him, where he's like the ball's going right to the striker. I, if that's for Ron, he gets something on it. Uh, that's the difference, right? That's the difference you have between uh, a Ron and a Lindelof. There, we saw him concede similarly in the uh, Europa League final against Villarreal. Uh, just one thing to think about when you see this go across the bow, and you're like, oh, I think for Ron might do a little better there. That's just something to note because those types of chances are going in in the Premier League. Those type of chances are going to the Premier League. You know, it was their only chance of the game, but you're t- you're totally right because we got caught out. We should have put a head on it. Uh, their striker should have at least challenged the head. The head didn't do nothing the whole game. He didn't have it do anything. But most importantly, teams in the next round of the Europa League, including the um, the Barces of the world, the Juve's of the world, the Ajax's of the world, they'll bury those chances. And like you said, Suchek on West Ham, he would bury like West Ham will bury yes. those chances. You give him that, they will. Antonio they will bury him. Bash it in. So, hey, but like I said, they if this was a year ago for United against Sheriff at home, we we wouldn't have had as much possession. We would have dominated the game the same way. So this was just like more of the same from Eric Ten Hag as he's getting a grip on the side on the side, and it was just encouraging to see. Forty third minute, Eriksson. Bides his time, picks his spot, and Diego Dallo has Manchester United in front. His first goal for the club in European competition. It's taken 44 minutes to find a way past Maxim Kobal in terms of United's ability to clinch a, a space in the top two in Group E this evening. Then that should help eradicate them. I mean, look, a great header, brave header from Delo. He goes in like he's trying to score, something we haven't seen from United in a while. We should be scoring from corners. I think that shows a little bit of grit there. Good for Delo. Great season he's having. Starting right back at Manchester United, right? Uh, absolutely. At the moment, arguably, Manchester United's the most improved player this season. He has gone from strength to strength. Like, shout out to Delo. Wasn't sure he had it in him, um, but he has shown that he's got it. He really does have it. He's improved his overall game. Um, and just a good good ball in from Erickson. We need more of that. We've been too, a little too clever on all the corners we've had this season, especially in the Premier League, like the lay it off and then get another ball in and look for well, or maybe even a direct shot at the edge of the box. This is just a classic corner, bang it in, more of that. We need more of these goals and just good to see. So Delo, well done to him. Highly deserved. Yeah, and, you know, what a perfect time to score a goal. 44th minute, you go in a half, up one nothing. Second half, double sub Rashford and Maguire come on from Martinez and Anthony. Uh, 59th minute, Ronaldo with a great chance to score or pass. He blasts it wide, looks looking rusty. Uh, but in the 62nd minute, he would score, but he's off sides. That is kind of the theme this season. But, you know, he's playing that line. He's trying to be a poacher. Uh, and in this game, that's what he should be doing. 63rd minute, Shaw and McTominay come on. For Delo and Casemiro, I thought, you know, this is get the lead. This is straight business. Make some subs. Get some people some time. And then in the 65th minute, Marcus with a nice header. Sure. That is outstanding. Finished off by Marcus Rashford, but very much a collective effort. Justifiable applause all around Old Trafford for a scintillating piece of Manchester United play. All started with Maguire, and from that moment on, they were moving the ball quickly and eventually. Little dart from Ronaldo, the decoy run. McTominay saw other options available, and Shaw's first contribution since coming on as a substitute was to flight that beautifully onto the forehead of Marcus Rashford. Look, uh, a lot to do for Marcus. I'm going to disagree with the announcer because the header was a little behind him. It didn't have the ball was behind him. It didn't have too much pace. And the way he hit the header, 
put more power on it and placed it perfectly in the net. You know, he did uh, miss a few headers earlier in the season, and clearly he's been working on his game because that was a harder one and a great finish for Marcus Rashford. Great finish, great ball in from Luke Shaw. A little behind him, but it was a very nice ball at the end of the day. He has, he's looked good. He is like, you know, the Malasia fire underneath his ass has lit old, old Luke Shaw in terms of uh, impossible meat pie. You know, we've been hard on him, probably rightly so, but looked good. And like you said, Marcus Rashford with a lot to do in this position. A lot to do. Beautiful pointed header. Need more headers. It actually has like a grit in the side. You know, we haven't scored enough headers uh, in this team, and we need a little bit more of that oomph. But encouraging stuff. Great goal from Marcus. Press on from there. I mean, where's Marcus playing? Right? It's like... On the <laughs> so, left. Exactly. We got yeah, a lot yeah. of players on the left. I know Garnacho looks pretty good on the left. Uh, obviously, we have uh, Sancho, but, you know, Rashford mixing in as well. 77th minute, Rashford with another nice shot. Saved wide. Garnacho goes just over. And then Donny Fandy comes on for Garnacho. Didn't do much, but it's good to see Donny is alive and kicking because we need bodies uh, going forward for this long season, especially with the World Cup upcoming. Donny... I don't know if he's going to play with the Netherlands. I would assume he would. But as a player, you would hope he'd find some form at the tournament, come back. He spent $40 million on him, so the fact that he's like getting some minutes is a good sign. And obviously, sir, everyone's you know was waiting for this moment. 81st minute, Cristiano Ronaldo. Let's go. He step for Ronaldo lasted just one game. He's 10 minutes away from seeing this one out. Hoping to score. Surely second time around he will. Cristiano Ronaldo back from a self-inflicted exile with a Manchester United goal. Managed for his discipline in the game here against Tottenham. Sat out the draw at Chelsea. Reunited with his teammates tonight and whilst he was thwarted from the header by Koval, he was the most alert in around the front of the goal to pounce first on the I rebound. Mean, Great ball from Bruno. Like, Ronaldo's marked by two defenders. Great header. Keeper has to make a save, and he's right there to follow up and poach it with his left foot. Look, Ronaldo, we're going to need him. We don't have another number nine, and we need somebody scoring goals. Like, look how good Rashford looked coming in off the left. Ronaldo at nine. It's pulling two defenders away, giving Rashford space. He's getting shots. He's getting opportunities. You know, he's not going to be pressing West Ham high. I mean, there's going to be games you're going to want to use them. These are the type of games like the Southamptons. So Ronaldo is a card we need to play. Uh, obviously, he's a polarizing figure. Probably will leave in January, but then we can go down that rabbit hole in the news section. But he did a job here. Looked good. He's a threat. They got to they gotta defend him, and then you get more space for Rashford on the left. I, it's, a, it's a great one-two punch. <coughs> Excuse me. If you have Ronaldo around, you want him happy. If he's scoring goals, he will be happy. You know, that's just how it works. Um, and at the end of the day, we have got no confidence that this uh, management team is willing to backfill, if you will, Cristiano Ronaldo. Like they've even said, the whispers in the press is if they let him leave, there's no guarantee that they would sign even another striker, which is like kind of insane. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely insane when you really think about it. So at the end of the day, would you rather have... Uh, you know, Ronaldo, who's moody and might walk off every other, you know, every six weeks or nobody else behind them. And I hate to say it, you probably want Ronaldo because like games like this, games where a team's going to pack it in and you're going to be doing in-swinging balls all day. He's a useful player to have around. He still has a thing or two for some of these younger lads, right? You know how much I meant to Garnacho to play <laughs> next to Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, he'll be thinking about that for a long time. So. That's an interesting one because, like, if they're not replacing him in January, I think you want to keep him because you're stronger with him, even if he's, uh, you know, a bit of a prima donna. Exactly, and there was great balance in the squad in possession. You had Garnacho high left, Anthony high on the right, Bruno covering everything in number ten. Erickson was all over the pitch. Uh, same with the low and Casemiro. I mean, box to box, classic box to box, and Martin has been. Uh, the low hanging, def low hanging fruit here, sweeping up everything at the back. United, we imposed our game plan on our opponent, and that is what you want to see. I mean, absolutely textbook stuff for Manchester United. Erickson, shout out to him. He had another dominant performance for Manchester United, showing that he's undroppable. And with Bruno being undroppable, it's really interesting. 
Uh, stats for Erickson, 102, 122 pass attempts, 108 completed. Um, his progressions via pass, 11.2. Progressions via carry, 5.9. I mean, he just dominated. You look at him spraying the balls all across the pitch. That is what provides balance in our attack. To Anthony, to Garnacho, to Ronaldo, to Bruno. I mean, Erickson, Bruno looking to be world-class midfielders. It's true. And then you put Casemiro uh, behind him, who like grows by every game that he plays for Manchester United. Also, shout out to Erickson getting an assist. A good one for Delo's goal. Uh, hasn't had enough of those. You could say the same with Bruno, partly because the finishing on the other end of it hasn't been good enough for Manchester United. But talk about a player that is needed. The player that is needed is Donnie Vandebeek because we need to rotate Bruno and Erickson. And they play, if they're available and, fr and fresh, every game because they just look so lights out. They are so dangerous. They know how to play. They are a big part of Eric Ten Hag's approach and philosophy, especially with Casemiro behind them. Wow, what a player he is. Um, but you'd love to have Donnie to bring in against, you know, for the League Cup matches of the world when you're playing an opponent who's not top, top, top. So hopefully he can figure uh, feature later this season. And if he's not a player long-term at the club and, you know, maybe he's going to eventually be replaced by Hannibal or the like, you can at least like get some money out of him because right now if you're trying to sell him, you wouldn't get much. Yeah, and a big shout out to Erickson, Malasia, Garnacho. Those are our uh, top progression players via carry and via pass. Also, uh, Lindelof McGuire did a job, uh, Casemiro less so. But those are the players that are helping United get the ball forward. Obviously, it was pretty easy to get the ball forward because uh, Sheriff was were so deep. Nonetheless, good stats for Manchester United and some uh, you know great player to highlight in Erickson free signing and has been absolutely huge for us this season uh looking at the stat line 24 shots to zero 10 shots on target to their zero so obviously you can see the tilt was there 75 percent of the ball to their 25 percent manchester United absolutely dominate looking at the group standings here 15 points for real sociedad uh 12 for united three for sheriff zero for ammonia we have clinched the knockout stage of the europa league so next time we play is in february you get the draw. Obviously, that's rigged. We'll play Barcelona guaranteed <laughs> because UEFA wants that TV money. Yep. It makes sense that we're going to get Barcelona. Now, obviously, uh, we can only get Barcelona for a Tier 2 team. There is the game against Saucy Dad next Thursday. We have to win by two in order to win the group. I just think with all these fixtures at this point, you got to give up on Europa League. What are the odds you're going to hit them for two to win when you have a lot of fixtures? Like, again, you have EFL the next Thursday. Players need rest. We're already in. Like, I'm fine with it. He, You know Eric Ten Hag. He's a stubborn, stubborn SOB, and he ain't going to give an inch to the side, especially in the run-up to the World Cup. He knows how important momentum is. And he also he wants to avoid these fixtures because... You don't maybe you miss out on a Barcelona or, or a UA or an Ajax who would be dangerous in that playoff round. Obviously, you also want to save the matches because it's not like the second half of the season is any uh, more comfortable as it you know as it relates to like match congestion. So I think he's going to go down there and try and make a statement. Obviously, we're playing much better now than we were playing when we first played uh, Real Sociedad back earlier in the season. So. I agree with you what you said, but I know this manager, and he's going to be looking to like bring a really strong eleven down to Northern Spain. I know that is <laughs> the know, case, you but know. you should not. Yeah, but he will. You, I mean, like people need minutes, uh, people need a rest. I know he's got to run this team in the ground for the World Cup. That's just who he is. Uh, but what do we know? Let's check in with the man, the legend, Eric Ten Hag. I, I think it was a, a good win. Um, of course, you always you want more. I, uh, I think we create more chances to score more goals. Um, yeah, but we create the chances, and that's good. And finally, we score also three goals. And I think what's good is we play in opponent's half and we stay there. And so we attacked well organized. Uh, we don't concede counters. We were good in rest defense, defense transition. It didn't co uh, come out. Maybe they had one shot in the end of the. Uh, of the game. First half, one time they came in with a cross, but for the rest, we only played in their half. And so, what I said, we, um, we create chances, 
we scored first of uh, of a set play. Happy with that. And I think the second and the third goal were uh, yeah, really well outplayed goals. The game allowed you to make a number of changes. Uh, taking Martinez and Anthony off at half time was that pre-planned? Was that to rest them? Yeah, more or less. Uh, when we are up, uh, and then was that um, was that planned? Uh, Martinez yet uh, he's booked. Uh, you were uh, on the second, so then he was out uh, when he got booked for uh, for a third for the next game. So um, we know what uh, what we have to do in uh, in Sociedad. We have to win there, and with two goals difference. All right. So uh, horrible audio here from the Ten Hag press a press conference no surprise that is the Europa League theme but he's oh, wearing the zip up turtle with the blazer it. it's a rough it. look sir uh, it's a, sir he does what he's it's doing. a zip up yeah, turtle he, it's zip not zip up turtle you don't have you could wear a turtle with the blazer not even i don't even think that good of a look cuz you get the blazer with that little like color on the side uh and then you get the zip oh. he's, he's working on Estes. you know sir, if you I did like, that i tell I like you. the turtleneck uh he could pull off with that shiny bald head of his he, he's he's finding his feet, sir. He's getting his confidence. Yeah, as Sir a Alex did it, but it was like black on black. You know, it wasn't like a zip. New new age, baby. It's a new age. These, these, like the football I don't managers are stunting out on the touchline. You love to see it, dude. The guy doesn't give an inch. He knows exactly what he wants to see. Even when the team plays well, he knows they can play better. He's always pushing. That is the level of standards that we need back in this club. That is so refreshing. Sorry, if we're just talking about his quarter zips, hey, let us because that to is, be clear, that's the kind of problems you want to have. Is like, uh, you know, his shirt, his shirt ensemble well, a, was uh slightly off. Sir. It was no, uh, it was the zoot zoot suit. What was uh, <laughs> our boy Ole, Ole wearing down in Gdansk? Remember that uh, the the Shire suit. Uh, <laughs> the, so the worst dressed manager in the league is definitely Pep Guardiola for sure. Worst dressed. Worst dressed is Pep Guardiola because he wears all like that scarf and all this like he tries to be like too fashionable. Probably the guy who's got it right is like Klopp because it's just like basic whatever. Track it's suit. just like tracksuit, <laughs> yeah. like whatever they got in the trainer. Uh, yeah, I like that because it's just less. You don't have to like it's less personality. It's just easy. It's just like whatever they got in the in the training facility. Just put on like giant overcoat, whatever. But uh, Ten Hag going with like the the blazer zips. Uh, it's a, it's an interesting look. It's uh, in no man's land. I will definitely say that. The, probably the strangest dress manager we've had in a long time. Hey. Best manager we've had in a long time. So I don't Look, give a you shit. You got to criticize I, well, I'm something. I'm a suit guy. I, hey, hey, let us. This is, a, this is a fan pod of the greatest club in the world. We are all excited about a manager. We should all have opinions about what he's wearing. I, I like a suit. Suit, white shirt, like kind of Mourinho style. Um, but he's a Dutch man. He's going to go for like a little like, you know. He's always going to be big in the sweaters, bro. It's like it's cold as shit up in Manchester. No, I, He's bundling up. I'm more of a, I like my manager crazy, crazy. and dressed poorly. <laughs> that would probably be like in the Klopp category. He's got to look so, good. Yeah, it's Manchester yeah, exactly. United. We're a class yeah. club, dude. We're like Hollywood football. You know, you can't be looking like a like a trainer. Look, look at Belichick in the NFL. He looks Belichick like a madman like with a hoodie. Person. Yeah, but he's good. I like that look. You know, we need that. We need that on the touchline in Manchester. All right, we got a next match. It's Manchester United versus West Ham. The Hammers coming to Old Trafford uh, Sunday, October 30th, 9.15 a.m. Pacific, 12.15 Eastern. Sir, lifetime versus the Hammers. We've won 71. We've drawn 32. Lost 46. The last five, we've won four. Lost one. First time we ever played them. February 25th, 1911, lost in the FA Cup, 2-1. Coming to this match, the Hammers uh, Conference League, LOL. If you remember how last season ended, West Ham blew it. Uh, they basically had Europa League in their hands. We were destined to play uh, Conference League, and they lost last day. We lost last day, and somehow we got it. They beat Anderlecht in the the Europa Conference League. Then they beat Fulham 3-1. Then they beat Anderlecht 2-1. Uh, they drew Southampton, lost to Liverpool. Should have won that beat game, Bournemouth. to be honest. They should have beat the Scousers. I mean, not that the Scousers are playing particularly well, but they had them on XG, um, but they got pipped. So, they, dude, they're a tough opponent. You know, no, you they've know had a bad side. start. It's yeah. like great, like a good West Ham team uh, last season blew it. Now they're playing in Conference League. So, that, again, you're playing Thursday nights, and it's not even Europa League. You don't even get the Hans and Franz theme. Or I think you do get it. They don't know. even have the same. They just have the same theme. <laughs> they're just like, we're not, we're not cutting a new song. And uh, they had a bad start this season. So, what do we say? Trap game. 
This uh, we need to play well. We need to beat them. They're going to be better than Sheriff. And uh, we're missing our, our main man at the back line. So it's going to be really interesting to see how we cope. A little history against West Ham was founded in 1895 as Thames Ironworks and reformed in 1900 as West Ham United. They moved to the bowling ground in 1904, which remained their home ground for more than a century. And obviously, uh, from the Olympics, they got the new uh, London Stadium they play at. West Ham have been winners of the FA Cup three times, 64, 75, 1980, and runners-up twice in 23 and 2006. The club have reached two major European finals, winning the European Cup Winners' Cup in 1965 and finishing runners-up in the same competition in 1967. Three West Ham players were members of the 1966 World Cup final winning England team, Bobby Moore, Jeff Hurst, and Martin Peters. And the club has a long-standing rivalry with Millwall. If you haven't seen Green Street Hooligans, you should. And it goes into that rivalry uh, deeply and all the blowing bubbles and everything associated with West Ham. Uh, and West Ham adopted their claret and sky blue color scheme in the early 1900s with the most common iteration of the claret shirt and the sky blue sleeves first emerging in 1904. David Moyes, tactical genius, former manager of Manchester United, only lasted a season, a season after Fergie retired, after Fergie told us to back the manager, but Woodward <laughs> wasn't listening. Uh, Woodward botched the transfers. Moyes botched the, the training room staff. And that was all she wrote. He was out, and he has come back at West Ham United. I mean, this is the kind of club that uh, David Moyes is perfectly set out to manage. You know, um, he never could have made it as a Manchester United manager. You know, he kind of showed that from his first press conference, just how out of his depth he was. But he's done a good job. He's a decent coach. West Ham, they have a reputation. They have a reputation. There's a reason they made that movie star. Their fans are like, ah, not the most pleasant crew. Millwall, you know, maybe not as bad as Millwall, but they're up there. And they're a tough team to play. Like you said, uh, Anthony is usually their striker, but Scamacca, the new Italian uh, number seven, has been playing well. Ben Rama, Bowen's a good player. And that midfield is very good. Suchek and Rice, obviously, we've been hearing a lot about Rice. If he's an English CDM, you're going to hear about him. Uh, and they also got Cat Thrower, Zuma, Cresswell, and Fabianski, classic trolls. So it, it's going to be a great match. United bringing it on Sunday afternoon. It's an important game. Like you said, trap game in every sense of the word. We need all three points. Let's go, baby. Uh, David Moyes playing the 4 2 3 1. It's going to be very interesting to see how they set up against Manchester United. Getting into Manchester United's injuries, Veron, we know he's out. Tuan Zebe is still working inside he is not on the pitch hopefully before christmas obviously probably won't be featuring the world cup uh brandon williams he's out martial this one is just keeps lingering on and on and on and it's almost like manchester needs to hire the pod as consultants because we told him that bringing tony martial back is he's always injured and you can't do it so again here we go it's not even the fact that it's like a it's an injury that keeps getting worse aaron wambasaka same thing uh, so to obviously Tony Martial is the big player here. He needs to be leading the line for Manchester United. He looks like he probably won't get healthy fully before the world cup. Cause once you come back from injury, you gotta get up to fitness and it's a whole nother challenge. So, and I don't know if he's going to be able to make it for France. So it's going to be really interesting to see who goes, who doesn't go. Now, if Tony Martial doesn't go to the world cup, I would say big win for Manchester United. So he can have time to get fit healthy for the second half of the season. He ain't, I mean, come on, let's be honest. <laughs> if he had played the entire season to date and had like continued his form, was that like, you know, eight goals, four assists, maybe he'd have a sniff the France squad. He ain't going to get anywhere close to it because the one thing they have, uh, they got strikers, they got Mbappe, they got Karim Benzema. So it's actually going to be beneficial. Hopefully he gets like some minutes in the run up to the World Cup and then just gets to hang out. I don't know what the plan is. For Ayrton Hag and the boys who are not featuring over those four weeks, whether or not they're going to get like a week off and then do training maybe somewhere warm, maybe in the Middle East. So they're going to come hang out with us. Yeah, maybe. Well, we'll be there. So we'll be there uh, rooting on the USA. Uh, hopefully, Burr Heffer can get the boys up. And we'll also be rooting on all our United lads, uh, as long as it's not England versus USA, because that's important. That builds confidence. I'm excited to see players that have done really well this season, i.e., I want to see what Martinez does for Argentina. I want to see Casemiro uh, playing with Fred at, for Brazil. Um, 
And I'd love to see Marcus. What about Anthony for Brazil? Anthony as well, because but they're like locked in. Guys, remember Fred's going to start every game. Anthony, well, they got more options up front, uh, being Brazil and all. You know, they got a couple of good players, so it'll be interesting. You know, and then there's the Dutch lads. We'll see, sir. I can't wait. World Cup, baby. World Cup. It, it, you know, it's coming, but it doesn't feel like it's coming. It doesn't coming. feel like it's coming. It's, it's weird. It's, summer. it's like it's such a weird feeling. Very World weird. Cup, winter, I'm cold, wearing a jacket, beanie <laughs> in the bunker. What is your lineup? My lineup is De Gea, Net. I got Delo, Lindelof, Martinez, Shaw, Casimir, Erickson, Bruno. I'm going to do Sancho on the left, Rashford up front, Anthony on the right. I'd love to do Marcus on the left, but I... Tony, Aunt Tony. Aunt Tony. There's no th, th, th. Okay, well, th, 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 You know me. I can't, I can't no, I know. pronounce my way out of a paperback. We get or, comments. We yeah, just got to try. We got to so try. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm it's trying. hard not to do that. Like, Anthony. I mean, hey, we're from New Jersey. Anthony. Anthony. Hey, Anthony. 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 Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There That's where it comes from. Yeah, yeah, I, I got the same lineup. Uh, th- go. This one picks itself. Yep. Very rarely do we have the same the same lineup. But if I'm being honest, Garnaccio is not going to start. Ronaldo is not going to start. The front three picks itself. Erickson, Bruno are going to start. Casemiro is locked on. And that's the best back line we have. So outside of a curveball rotation, this is going to be the lineup. And it it does pick itself. Uh, booking the bookies, you want to give us the odds here for Manchester United West Ham? United are the favorites, minus 145 at home. Uh, the draw at plus 290, and the Hammers at plus 390. Sir, what is your score prediction? I got uh, nil nil. Nil nil. Uh, 3 2. Thrilla and Manila, Thrilla. West Ham come out what early. Was the last time we had that, like, we, uh, I want it. So I, you know, therefore it shall be. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm just trying to manifest it in my brain. Um, I'd love to. I want. I'd love to just see us roll the hammers and just say, like pissed off David Moyes, and, and we're just laughing all the way. But I think they're gonna push it to us. They even might get some early goals, given that we have no Varane. You know, maybe not as confident heading out on Sunday, but big game nonetheless. The only thing we got going for us is it's 9.15 a.m. kickoff, so that means it probably is a good game. If it was like 6 a.m., 5 a.m., definitely nil-nil. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Let's get some news. All right, United in the news. We got some news here, sir. Uh, from Fabrizio Romano, fan of the pod, friend of the pod. One day. And by friend, I mean we follow him on Twitter and read his tweets <laughs> on our no podcast. Idea we are. Uh, <laughs> on uh, director Edwin Vanessar from IX, he's like, it's never been that close. He tells the Times, quote, I've had a good relationship with Manchester United, with the Manchester United board. I've had fantastic six years in Manchester, but I'm not finished here at IX yet. Meaning He's waiting for the club to get sold. Yeah, then he'll join yeah, Manchester yeah. United. There you go. He's basically like, I'm coming with that consortium if they ever come. Yeah, yeah. Because you know what? He's a smart man. Uh, and he would be hamstrung if he joined this club and worked for the Glazers and worked with Richard Arnold. So a couple news about like directors of football. S. There was the guy, Edwards, I believe, from Liverpool who is looking for a new contract. He squashed the rumor. He's like, ah, I'm, I'm actually talking to Chelsea. That's probably more likely because they're going to give me a more senior role. Um, and then you have Edwin Van der Sar going out of the way to make sure it is known and that, hey, Manchester United have, uh, didn't you know they have John Murtaugh as the director of football and how well he's doing? So don't expect this club to like go out of the way to hire competency any more than they need to. They brought in a real deal manager. They supported him, brought in his real deal staff. But like at the end of the day, we've got amateurs at the front of the squad in terms of the front office, um, and it doesn't look like that's changed anytime soon. We'd all love to see a heavy brought in from an elite European club, um, but they'd prefer a yes man that's just going to tell them how 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 much ahead of the curve we are in terms of the investment. We're ahead of schedule. Mama Murta. Oh, you're ahead of schedule. Mama Murta. <laughs> oh, that guy. Well, yeah, like, you fly away. Uh, so, look, Todd Bully bought Chelsea. Uh, they they got somebody. R- finally, a rumor to reach an agreement with Lawrence Stewart, who is a technical director of... Of Monaco. Yeah, there you go. Uh, not a bad club. Uh, not a bad uh, director who's had a good track record at Monaco. Um, buying young players, selling uh, big players. So Todd Bully doesn't mess around. That's what you should do. If Real you're clubs. an American clubs, and you exactly. don't know anything about football, you need to just... Yeah. It's, it's about knowing what you don't know. Yep. It's about hiring the right people to put you in the right position to spend a billion dollars in the right way. Yep. And United hasn't done that, and we continue to not do that because Murtaugh was a trainer that came out over with David Moyes. 
He has no credentials. Nothing. Nada. Has not done it anywhere. Never. Hasn't done it for Brighton. Nope. Has done it for Monaco. That is going to yield paying, overpaying for Anthony, overpaying for probably Casemiro. In some ways, there is some criticism, not knowing who to get, just going to the manager like it's showed 1993. Up in showed up in Barca. That was the con. That's the highlight. <laughs> Missing the call with Holland's oh uh, representative. So, again, you just have to hit the point. Hashtag lasers out. How can you buy this club and not put in like world class leadership? That is what doesn't make sense. You can have the priority be take out the dividend with uh, Arnold being the CEO, but you need someone who is running football operations who knows what they're doing. We do not have that. We haven't had that. We spent so much money, wasted so much money. Clearly, the the problem is as clear as day clear what, as day. what the issue is at Manchester United. And even Ten Hag calling the shots isn't the fix. No. Nope. Because. Manchester United have to have an identity that is agreed upon by the board, by the CEO, that is aligned with the director of football, who then hires the manager that is aligned with that. Now, I agree Ten Hag style right now is the way we should be playing, but that needs to be put in place over the long term because similar like a GM in football, the GM installs the, the roster for the long term and the manager can come and go. So we have to be building on the future versus... Van Gaal ball chop and change. Mourinho ball chop and change. Ole ball chop and change. That's all we've been doing, and that wastes a billion pretty quick. And it did, right? Even this transfer window, you know, uh, very clear that Eric Ten Hag was picking the targets because you saw earlier in the window, like, Murtaugh Madness heading down to Barcelona, like, diddling his thumbs, walking down Los Ramblas, like he had no idea what he was doing, right? <laughs> ready to get mugged. Um, and here we are, because you overspent probably by 30, 40, 50 million across Martinez, across Anthony and across um, uh, Casemiro. And that money, they're not going to give him more money uh, next year. So we're going to be hamstrung. We got a top manager. We don't have a top front office. Like, if you're going to have Richard Arnold, who's like as qualified as you, you or I to be the CEO of this club, then you at least, like you said, have to have a football man, first and foremost, qualified who has done it at the highest level, even if it's the Brightons of the world. Because you know what? The DOF of Brighton, who's gotten poached numerous times, and I'm sure whoever they use to backfill is much more qualified than John Murtaugh, who's a numpty, who's out, who's just, he's so over his skis, and it's so obvious. And the only thing is, like, they just want a yes man that's going to go on those earnings calls and say, like, how well we're doing, and how much money we're spending, and how much we're back in the manager, and you know what? Glazer's out. This is why we're Glazer's out now until the end of time. That shit has cooled down because United has been playing well, and they spent in the summer but that's the root problem, and that is the root problem of Manchester United and will continue to be. If he pulls off a top-four finish, they ain't spending shit next year. I can guarantee you that. And look at the Ronaldo situation that we're in right now. Great point. He's gonna could leave in January, right? Should leave in January. He's unhappy the club. You should let him go. We're not going to sign anyone. They said it. They we're actually, it. no, we're rumored with an MLS striker. I take him over nobody. MLS striker. How many big teams? Big MLS guy. That's your big how many teams are signing strikers from the MLS to be locked on England? number nine? Nobody. How many? Nobody. Nobody. Why? Because it's the MLS. <laughs> if you want to sign the MLS guy to be number four, number three behind some world beaters at Manchester United, fine. Give him a shout. I don't mind it. To lead the line. Marshall's injured. Get rid of Ronaldo. Rashford has to be on the left. You're going to start MLS? Cheap. Give good me a Gallo. Cheap. cheap. Give me a Gallo. Gallo is good. Bring him, back. <laughs> Bring him back. Like, that is Cavani. where we're at. I mean, like, that's Looney Tunes. And that is only driven by. So, if you're going to. If you can't afford nobody, then why did you buy all those players for those huge prices when you know we have a glaring, gaping hole at the striker position. And our manager needs a young striker who can work off the front. You have to plan for the long term as a director of football. Not reactionary bullshit that we've seen so many years in a row. And that's what's wrong with Manchester United, sir. I digress. Next bit of news. Rafael Varane is injured, will not play for Manchester United for the World Cup. We did talk about this, but the knee was not as bad as we thought. Shout out to Rafa. Hopefully he'll be back. Hopefully doesn't feature too much in the World Cup. He's getting healthy, you know, because you don't want him going out. I know. Like, again, uh, 
World Cup. Like players who are injured come rushing. Back early. Yep, they always do it. Rushing for the World Cup and then boom, does his knees proper out. That is the concern here. As a United very, fan, very good point, how so. goes the World Cup for these players? It's going to be how goes our season. So we'll be getting you pods during the World Cup. Don't worry. We're not taking a six-week break. Pod never sleep. That would have been something. You imagine just like, yeah, we're taking it off. Watching football. There's a lot of games to watch. Well, we can't stop. Won't stop. This Manchester United podcast, America Red Devils, we never sleep, sir. Uh, next bit of news, De Gea may have to slash his 375 k a week wages to stay at Manchester United with Eric Ten Hag still not convinced by the Spaniard. As his scouts, I, Diogo Costa, and Unai uh, Simone, as his successor, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's right. And there's other priorities because you know what? De Gea has stepped up. The news, the rumors is that like he is certainly open. He wants to stay at United. He likes Manchester. He's got a good spa- space, you know, kind of settled out for himself. And he's open to taking a wage cut to extend his time at the club. I think that is the right move. Get him on like a two plus one type of contract at like two and a quarter, you know, like 225 a week. That seems reasonable and, you know, probably fair and justified at this point. And then I would punt this on like, you know, given the priorities how much we need a number nine, and arguably, sir, we need two number nine. No, but next keepers year. are cheap, so you can, can bring be, some. They're top, top. You, we need like a Diego proper back. Would not be cheap. So the whole idea is that you bring in one of these guys, you extend De Gea, and this guy becomes the cup keeper, right? And yeah. then he earns the Romero. spot over two years. Like goalkeepers for everyone who doesn't remember, it's a very sensitive position it is. at United. And De Gea coming in was a transition. And anyone else coming in is going to be a transition. Like, if you look at Ederson at uh, City was a transition. It's always going to be a transition. The only one that wasn't is that uh, keeper that I hate at Liverpool. Uh, you know, with, with the with the, the girls beard. named Allison. <laughs> uh, so, at the same time, like, it's most likely going to be a transition. And you want to manage this as a transition. So, you need De Gea here. And you want to bring someone else in as a cup keeper. Because if you looked at... Uh, Henderson, the guy who wears the baseball cap and like <laughs> talks smack about United, like yeah. while he's still in our contract with us, something, which is like not there. a good look. Uh, tells you everything you know about him. Tells you he was probably the leaker in the in the dressing room. One of the leakers. Uh, there, bad I guy. There's a lot of leakers. There's a lot of leakers. Bad guy. Never met him. Uh, <laughs> bad guy. <laughs> he's like, where's he, all you? you the cap. I, I'll tell you what. You it's know like a, who it's like he the is. Wigan goalie. Like the Wigan you know, goalie in 05 would wear the cap. And you know like, who Dean Henderson up. is, bro? He had like one good season for Sheffield United. Comes back to Manchester Solid. United. Like he's like, like, the, like, 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 like he's the best player ever. Then he gets the opportunity. To, like the role was there. You got to win the role. He did not win the role. Uh, you know, everyone, we wanted him to like win the role at Manchester United as a keeper. He didn't, he didn't play that great. So I view a keeper, if De Gea is doing well and we're winning, like someone else has to come take it from him. And that's why you need to have one of these guys come in. And we have other, like I said, we have other priorities. We need a couple strikers. I think we're good on the wings midfield. I think it depends. You know, you could like upgrade, uh, the, the Donnie role. You could get another, probably need another center back. So I, I think the fact is, like, De Gea has shown really good progress under um, Eric Ten Hag. He's come back from that really rough start to the season, as you all remember. I, I just think there are other priorities ahead of us at the moment. Yeah, but you go whack-a-mole with Manchester United. You fix the midfield. Bloop. It's yeah. like, then it's like, oh, no. It's like, you know, uh, you know, we lost Cavani. didn't replace him. Ronaldo wants out. Not going to replace bro. him. Replace Martial, clearly, after the last two years, is, like, not the guy. Like, not the guy. Like, not the guy. Great preseason. Say again. Like he, he played <laughs> how many again. good games in the preseason? Like couple, two? Couple. Not the dude. Not like the dude. injured at Sevilla, did nothing. Like, bring him back. He's our guy. Like, really? Like, don't pitch me good that. Good and cheap, sir. What's the don't ma- pitch ma- me that? What's the Glazer motto? Good and cheap. It's like it's unbelievable. And then it's like you want to play fifty plus games without a locked on number nine with like a disenfranchised CR seven who, you know, news flash, I could have told you <laughs> this manager him wouldn't get along. So like who is the gap go? He would have been cheap. He would have been cheap. Sesco went for twenty million pounds. Julian Alvarez went last last no, January I know. for There's fifteen so many million options. pounds. Like there, there are all these players. I mean, speaking of which, Rangnick, another yeah, as he should. Yeah, let's get into him. it. Next, him, sir. Ne- next bit of news: Rangnick, he wanted Holland, Vlahovic, in Kuku, in Kunku. Uh, I can't even say the other one. Okay. Luis Diaz and Murata as transfer targets. Right. So Rangnick, he gets it. Saw we needed a number nine. 
listed all these guys. I mean, clearly, retroactively, it's pretty easy to say, hey, I want all these great players. So you have to put a grain of salt. But like Rangnick wanted a number nine in January last year. And what did the board do? We could have gotten top four. We probably need another midfielder. We probably need a striker. There are options available. We didn't go for anyone. It's a bold strategy. Uh, there's $100 million on the line. I can't get through my head why they wouldn't try to make some of these moves. We came out this January. We want Diaz. Then it was like Nkuku we want. And it's like, oh, we don't want him. We want him next year. We don't want him. And then it's like Martial's our guy. There you go. That's that's Manchester United. Why spend 80 something million on Anthony and then not have a number nine? You have to make these calls where we need to be plugging these holes. And Rangnick highlighting this just shows you the dysfunction at Manchester United, which is why it's always glazes out. And this is what he was good at. Like he shouldn't have been on the touchline. He should be picking players for us to sign. I know obviously some of these Boom. names are obvious. Like Holland, yeah, yeah. Go sign Holland. Go sign go sign like a 22-year-old Ronaldo. <laughs> like, yeah, duh. But just go Gavardio. I don't know who he is, but I bet you better than nobody. <laughs> like, nobody. Um, and this was just like, they didn't want to spend any money. They're like, well, we're waiting for the manager who they didn't know who's going to be. But, dude, they didn't sign the man- the was not a good manager, but he's a good technical director. This is what he's good at. Look at his buys historically. They've been top draw. It's like, let him pick a cheap striker, even if it's not, uh, you know, the guy... Dusan Vlavic that went to Juventus or Anuku who plays at RB who's like lights out as well, you know, um, he would have found a diamond in the rough and at least a punt. And it's like, here we are. Like I said, sir, we have never replaced Lukaku. And I think we sold him in what, 19? Like it's uh, been it's, a minute. Before that, I, I have 18? to think 18. But last season, you and me went to Crystal Palace away. Crystal Palace away, there was a lot of players who were going to play in that game. It was the last game of the season. There was Europa League football on the line. And the day before, all these players ghosted. Who ghosted that game? Ronaldo. Ronaldo ghosted that game. Pogba ghosted that game. A lot of players who said, we're done. We're done. And at that point, I knew... Eddie said he's done. Yeah. It's like, at that point, I knew Ronaldo was done with Manchester United. Rangnick knew Ronaldo was done with Manchester United. Rangnick passed that feedback on. And then well, they Joel Glazer well, brings they, him well, back. Rangnick. And then Ronaldo says he wants out, which is like not a surprise. He's probably trying to do it in a classy way. Then he has to come out because the board's not letting him leave. And then it turns into this whole situation. And this is why you, someone's got to get a hold of this thing. And the way you get a hold of it is open heart surgery, get rid of these guys who don't want to play, and get younger players in. That's what we should have done. I'm a Ronaldo fan, but at the end of the day, signing Vlahovic and Cuckoo and Kunku, I'm dying, killing his name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tweets are coming. Tweets uh, are coming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like signing, bringing one of these players in and like letting the older guard go is what we've always needed. We needed that since Rangnick was in charge in January. And for some reason, the club is reluctant to do it. And that just shows you how the board holds us back over time. 100%. There's no doubt about that. No doubt about that, sir. All right. Jumping into fan questions here, sir. We got some spicy ones from the plebeians <laughs> at Rolling the Deep 1995. Quote, fine performance that showed our lack of clinicality. Again, Carnacho absolutely lights out. The boys should be playing for this first team more often. Dot, dot, dot. I can't agree with you more. Uh, Ten-, Ten Hag did talk about that in the press. And he alluded to how he didn't have a good start to the season and, you know, he's shown resilience. So I think Ten Hag kind of puts him under his thumb. I think Ten Hag is like a guy that you piss off. Like he was late once in preseason and Ten Hag benches him for like three months. I think that's literally the deal. He doesn't give you an inch. I mean, he he was late and then he also walked off in the Rio preseason game with CR7, which I think also pissed them off. And you know what? But Bruno did too, and Delo did as well. So no yeah. doubt, but you know, I'm sure maybe there was other things that happened at Carrington, right? That pissed him off. Either way, he's a young player. His development and transition into the first team squad has to be managed very, very carefully. Um, you don't want to injure him. You don't want to put too much expectation on him. I think we want to see more of him. Of course, there are a couple of players that could play on the left wing. He looked great, lively, willing to take players on. You know, he has the confidence. He has the swagger. 
Uh, people are criticizing Anthony for that swagger. Garnacho has that. Dude, he's got it. Like he, He's a player. He just needs to be incorporated into this team. And he will get minutes. And you know what? I tr- I do trust the manager because it's like we've had no discipline in this club, arguably for a decade, you know, minus the the Mourinho years when he gave a shit until he was just like, yeah, fire me so I can get my payout. Um, but we need that because at the end of the day, it's like his front office ain't helping him. He's on his own, and it's like his club. It is his club. It's Eric that Hag is calling the show, and that's the only way we got. Yeah, and his quote on Garnacho uh, when asked what did he do wrong in the early weeks of the season, he said he didn't do anything wrong. He It's just kids. So he's young. He's young. Super young. But we need to see him more. We will. You know, because when Sancho's stale out there on the left, you got to get the kid in. Uh, at Ty Kircher, quote, good win. It's a good day when your keeper literally has nothing to do. Job done. Good to see such a dominant performance. Hashtag Glazers out. Uh, great take. At Mike United Mets, quote, wow, from the dark days of Ralph to Ten Hag ball in five months. Seven matches unbeaten. Have to go to Spain looking to win the group and avoid the UCL drop downs. We're through the group. Will United win the Hansa Franz Cups? Hashtag Glazers out. What do you think? I think if we can go down to Saucy Dad and actually turn the tide, which is, you know, the odds are against us because it's away. They're a good side. They're a tough Spanish Basque side. Um, I think if we can, like, skip the knockout round or the playoff round or whatever the fuck they call it, I think we can win it. Um, I think if we have to go, if we finish second and we have to go to that, like, cauldron of, you know, playing Juve, you know we're going to get Barca. It's going to be like us, Frankie de Jong, and Javi sitting on the sitting on the sideline. Uh, I think it'll be more challenging because there's going to be so many fixtures. And at that point, you know, we should be prioritizing top four because this team has, if we can get a striker, right? I think this team has has it. We have a squad deep enough to finish the top four. I just think like Ronaldo needs replacing because Ronaldo wants to go. Look, Hans and Franz, it, it, to me, I there's a limit on the priority because if you look at those league games and also like the EFL Cup, like again, I've said it so many times, like if I was a manager at Man- Manchester United and I was looking to get my hands on a trophy, it would be the EFL Cup. Like that is the easiest trophy that we could win and like is move it? the needle. Europa League is going to be a very difficult tournament. And I'm not afraid of any of the teams coming down from the champ. You know, are you afraid of Barcelona? It's like, as a fan, if we, I would rather us finish second and play an Ajax and knockout stage because Jesus Christ, playing like Sheriff. I'm like done with this stuff. I want to be playing like real teams. I want to be of? playing real teams and exciting matches instead of like trying to simp to the final and like lose to Villarreal. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I want, I'd rather play Barca like straight off the bat, have a hey, big take it game, to them, beat them up, get some confidence. So, I still don't view this tournament as one that I really want to win. I'd rather win. Like, if you were to tell me if you you can win a tournament, I'd say FA Cup. Yeah. You look I at mean, the history of the FA Cup. We're you in look this at what, year. You're, yes. We're not winning the league. So, yeah, I would take the FA Cup. That's more prestigious than the Europa yes. League or the EFL Cup. I don't agree with you that the EFL Cup is easier to win than the Europa League. You have the Europa League. You have the travel. But EFL Cup, you have City. You have uh, the Scouts well, bastards. Other teams can knock them off, but they, it's true. You but also look at the teams coming into Europa League. Like your argument for the whole first half of this pod season is, there's no one in the Europa League. We're gonna win it, and well, then like now more. all these teams not are coming down. Like, now they like, are. You, like, like that was wrong. Like wild card. Wrong like again. yeah, exactly. Oh, like yeah, yeah, Alex is wrong. Yeah, 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 we'll get yeah, used to yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> your theory of like nobody's yeah, in this well, tournament. Like me. all these teams coming from the Champions League, you forgot about. Wrong again. Uh, at Jamal Mota, quote, Sirs, Ronaldo hitting the sleeper so much good in this game. Two goals from our head, one from our corner, clean sheet. Garnacha looked good. Anthony entertained. Donnie and Harry both doing well. And Rasher back on the score sheet. A Hans and Franz classic. Ten Hag well ball is close at hand. And that is what Europe League's about. Just like, you know, adding some seasoning to that, to that soup. That is our, our chemistry of our team, and we needed it today. So a good check the box for a lot of players, and that's what this competition should be for Manchester United. It's about minutes. It's about continuing the momentum. Hey, you know, maybe they would have liked to blow this week, but at least we were at Old Trafford, um, and you got an opportunity for some players to get a run out, right? We haven't seen Dahani in a long time. Rashford gets a nice goal. Ronaldo gets a goal. Garnacho plays like 80 minutes, looked great. Um, you know, that midfield continuing to impress. A lot to build on this. This is a big match this weekend. Arguably the toughest match we have before the break and play coming up right around the corner. So a couple weeks, two weeks left uh, until our last game against Fulham. 
West Ham, tough side, but you know, I hope United kind of bring it to them, play that more attacking midfield in uh, Casemiro, Bruno, and Erickson, and really just kind of pick apart David Moyes, tactical genius. I'd love to see it. Uh, last one here at whatever uh, clever nine. Quote, Garnacha will be special. So, yeah. Yep. He looks a player. there. I was ranting on the other body. He's ready to go. He's ready to go. It's like we saw it came in. He, he could start a game in Europa League. Looks like he should be starting. That is not what we have a lot of on the bench, like Palestri. Like, I couldn't say that about him. But you could bring Garnacho 30 minutes against West Ham. He would do damage. He could score goals. Like, he is ready to go, ready to go, sir. That is it. That is the podcast. We appreciate everyone who listens. American Red Devils for fans, by fans, getting you this Europa League pod, 6 a.m. That's how we do it. Pod never sleeps. You want to support us, check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash America Red Devils. Our website, americaredevils.com. Our store, americaredevils.store. Beanie, shirts, scarves, everything you want. Write a review, like, subscribe. You know the drill. It helps this small-time operation. Give us our top 10 downloads the last seven days. Sir, number one, number one, how we doing, how we doing? Northfield, Ohio, Buffalo, New York, Tallahassee, Florida, Houston, Texas, Phoenix, Arizona, Oslo, Norway, uh, Ellicott City, Maryland, London, England, Bangkok, Thailand, and last but not least, Fargo, North Dakota. Appreciate all the American Red Devils listening week in, week out. We couldn't do it without you. Um, building, building, building something here at OT. Big match on Sunday against the Hammers from London. David Moyes heading up. He needs a humbling, sir. Let's remind him why he's uh, not up to snuff to be Manchester United manager. Tactical genius David Moyes on to the weekend. Everyone have a great week here. Enjoy. Strong enough to do you anyway. But that's the fact that it's the Chelsea is there.